What's going on guys? Jordan Richards here from Destination Devi here to present to you your Dynasty Stock Watch for week 16 on Mayo Media Network. Make sure you drop this video a like and subscribe to Mayo Media Network for all of the great content that Pat puts out each and every day. Now for this series, I've been going through each position group and talking about different players that you should be looking at heading into the offseason because now it's championship week. Not a whole lot of dynasty values are changing other than Jalen Hurts' super flex value is going through the roof and I expect that not to change at all. I expect it to keep going up because he's going against Dallas this week. And he's going to be putting on a show for his hometown crowd. He's from Texas. He played at Alabama. There's a lot of Southern ties to Jalen Hurst. And he's going to have a lot of people in the stands rooting for him this Sunday when he plays in Dallas for the first time in his NFL career. Now back to the wide receivers. I wanted to kind of go through my about top 24, top 30, not in sequential order. But I'm just going to kind of touch on these guys because... There's just so much happening in the wide receiver landscape right now. And if you were paying attention this offseason, there was an excellent tier of wide receiver twos that featured Terry McLaurin, DK Metcalf, DJ Shark, Calvin Ridley, Cortland Sutton, you know, and, and more guys on top of that because you sprinkle in the CD Lambs, the Justin Jeffersons, the Jalen Ragers, like all these guys that were first round picks. Jerry Judy was in there as well. And just all these wide receivers are basically clumped between, you know, somewhere around wide receiver 16 to wide receiver 24. And if you were able to hit on those guys, if you drafted Calvin Ridley, if you drafted Terry McLaurin, if you drafted DK Metcalf, like you're seeing an excellent return on your investment already in Dynasty. And it's not some every it's not every season that you see that kind of return or you see that that gap right there. And to me, it was just a, it was a glaring gap in ADP all offseason. You know, there's these guys that I like a lot already. Um, obviously we didn't see it from Shark this year Sutton got hurt there are a few guys that didn't quite make it out of that tier but when you add those guys with other aging veterans whether it's Keenan Allen Stefan Diggs that were a bit lower down ADP and then all of these kind of like middle of the road running backs it just lent a strategy that was more running back heavy and then taking some of these wide receiver twos quote unquote in your like fourth fifth round of startup drafts and so that's why i wanted to kind of touch on that this year because i'm seeing a similar trend although this year it's going to be even worse not to decipher the talent but it's just to be a middling group of all these different guys some that are producing some that aren't and just kind of how are we going to navigate that going forward now my tier one is still basically the same um, as i imagine everyone's is you have dk metcalf tyreek hill Devonte adams deandre hopkins and aj brown now, who's wide receiver one? Kind of hard to say. Most people have DK Metcalf. It's very difficult to say that right now because of how he's looking and how that Seattle offense is looking. It's very, it, to me, it's it's Tyreek Hill. Um, Tyreek Hill isn't very old. He's younger than Devontae Adams and DeAndre Hopkins. And then obviously there's AJ Brown, who probably should be wide receiver one. Um, he's in my in my opinion, the most talented of his draft class, which of course included DK Metcalf, and he always has been. But, you know, he's had the injuries. He plays in Tennessee, which is a run-first offense, so the target share isn't always going to be there for him. He has to do a lot after the catch and do a lot with what he's been given. But certainly, he's been, to the, he's been at the task. He's been able to do it. We've seen it all season. Then you get down to the next tier of guys, and right behind A.J. Brown at 5 is C.D. Lamb and Justin Jefferson. You know, these exceptional rookies that we've seen all season. C.D. Lamb hasn't quite seen the same success, but when you just look at how good both these guys have showed... Obviously, Justin Jefferson is probably going to be the offensive rookie of the year if it had my vote because that guy's a baller. But, you know, we're still going to see kind of how that shakes out. But as far as six and seven, I would not be steering away from drafting those guys too high. A.J. Brown last season basically fell to the exact same spot. This offseason, he was around, around late second in startups. And as you've seen, he's been able to maintain that value throughout the entire season. I would not be afraid of buying Justin Jefferson and CeeDee Lamb at that draft cost. Then you get down to Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas is just below those guys. And I think this is a fair spot for him and maybe even drop him a little bit further because at this point right now, we don't know what's going to happen with that offense. We don't know if Drew Brees is going to be there. And as we've seen, you know, he was fine with Taysom Hill, but we're not ready to call Michael Thomas a wide receiver one without Drew Brees at quarterback. We don't know who's going to be the quarterback and he may be fine but as far as taking these young guys over him mitigating some of that risk I'm totally for that for a receiver who's getting a little bit older and then you get to Calvin Ridley who's been exceptional this season um, as I mentioned he was in that tier of wide receiver twos and showed why he's a wide receiver one and I fully expect that to continue going forward 
Uh, I know that Julio Jones is still there. I, just, I know that he's still that dude. But we've seen this year really been able to produce in spite of Julio Jones, as well as when Julio's not on the field, he's still getting it done. He has the most 100-yard games in the league this year, seven, um, seven total. And, you know, we're just seeing him completely ball out. You know, third-year breakout. This is what we expect to see from a lot of these guys. Third year, finally get it done. He had some injuries. His touchdown rate is still exceptional. Um, I love Calvin Ridley myself. He's just a uh, route running savant. But he's a guy that you're still going to want to be drafting kind of in the top of your third round if that's the way you want to go as far as your wide receiver goes. I don't think he's overpriced. I think he's going to return on value. And we know the way the Atlanta Falcons roll. There's always going to be volume for him in that offense, which I like to lend myself to when I'm just talking about certain players. And then you go to Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin has kind of struggled in the second half a little bit, but he's still, in my opinion, a wide receiver one. He has all the talent. He has all the ability. It just comes down to quarterback play for him. Is he able to get a better quarterback in the offseason? Does Washington choose to kind of make that move? We're going to find out. Um, obviously, Dwayne Haskins isn't the answer. Alex Smith may be the answer. Um, he got injured and he was looking okay in that offense. But we're going to kind of see this offseason how they choose to play that. Terry's only 25 years old, so he's not old by any stretch. And he still has plenty of years ahead of him and could be on the verge of that uh, that third year breakout like we're always talking about. And so that's another spot where I tend to be buying guys right now. I, I really like that value even still in like the middle of the third round for Terry McLaurin. He's easily one of the best wide receivers in the league. Then you kind of get into like a group of some not aging veterans, but some guys who've been around for a while. You have the Stephon Diggs, the Keenan Allen, the Juju Smith-Schuster, and then DJ Moore. Uh, DJ Moore is an interesting case because this offseason, he's still a good value. In the offseason this year, he was being drafted around wide receiver 12, wide receiver 13, um, a little bit higher than he is right now because obviously we've seen Robbie Anderson has been the go-to guy in that offense, but we don't know what's going to happen with Carolina. Are they going to bring in another quarterback? There are people who are projecting quarterbacks to go to the Carolina Panthers, so we may end up actually seeing that. But how is DJ Moore going to kind of fit into this? We know that Stephon Diggs is already pretty good, but again, he's a little bit older. I wouldn't be afraid of drafting him. Obviously, with Josh Allen, we've seen what he can do. He's basically top five in targets this year. He's been a wide receiver one all season. Then you look at Keenan Allen, same thing, tied to Justin Herbert. He'll probably be a bit of a value. But even at that level, I'm kind of iffy on it. I may just want to go younger as far as that goes and get a guy like DJ Moore who may see similar volume, much more upside, and a lot younger. I still like Keenan Allen a lot, but if we're drafting him around wide receiver 16, I may just be willing to pass for a younger option. That's just how I like to play Dynasty. But if you can get him a little bit later, the value will definitely be had there. And then there's Juju Smith-Schuster, who, you know, we've seen him dancing on the logos, and it's not turning too well for him, so he should probably stop doing that. But yet, he's been okay. You know, he struggled early, and then he kind of picked it up, and now that entire offense is struggling again. So it's kind of hard to make how the Steelers view Juju and how the league views Juju. I'm sure a lot of GMs aren't too happy with him right now, but I don't think that will stop him from getting a new contract. People have actually talked about him going to Washington to help be that slot guy for Terry McLaurin to kind of run the middle of the field. But I'm not really sure how he's going to shake up. I do think that he could be a buy. But again, like we've seen in Pittsburgh already, he's not a wide receiver one. So even if he goes to a situation where he's looking like a wide receiver one, I would not be drafting him there because he just doesn't have the ability. Then you kind of get into a, another tier of wide receivers. Some of my favorite guys, and like I was talking about in kind of these middle rounds, there's a lot of guys that I like, but it's there's a bit of risk here. Like you're going to have the Jalen Ragers, the Brandon Ayukes, two first round picks. Brandon Ayuk has been excellent this season, but as I've already mentioned in this segment, there is a lot of issues with Brandon Ayuk as far as where his target's going to go. Is he going to get sweeps? How many touches can we expect him to get per game? Because there's still Debo Samuel and George Kittle. We don't know what they're going to do this offseason either. But I do, I was very impressed with Brandon Ayuk this past week, especially. He asserted himself in that offense. I believe he was top five in targets with 13. And there's going to be a lot of room for him to grow into this offense. But it's still the George Kittle show. Debo Samuel will still get touches. The running backs will still be used heavily. How does Brandon Ayuk fit into this offense? Can he get to George Kittle level on the target pedigree? Or is Debo Samuel still going to be the kind of go-to option um, the number one wide receiver as far as touches go in that offense. We're going to have to see this offseason. We'll see how it plays out, see what beat reporters say. But I do think that Brandon Ayuk could be a guy who could be in the top 12 because he's that explosive. He's big, he's fast, he's strong. He has great yak ability. So he definitely has a lot of upside if he does see that target share that we need him to see to be a wide receiver one or at least a high-end wide receiver two. Corlin Sutton's another guy. He's coming back this offseason um, after ACL surgery. 
we don't love Denver right now, though. And so even at, you know, right around wide receiver 20 to 25, I don't love it. I do like Corlin Sutton a lot, but this is a new offense. You know, there's a lot of new players in this offense that weren't there when he was seeing a 40% target share and 45% of the air yards. It's just a completely different offense. There's new guys there. Jerry Judy um, is going to be a buy low this offseason if they can get a quarterback and kind of get that under control. But I'm still not sure how I feel about Corlin Sutton because he's just not quite there yet. He's not quite there yet and he's going to be coming back off ACL surgery and the quarterback play is awful and so there's just a lot of things that still need to be ironed out in that offense that haven't been yet and so the last guy I kind of wanted to touch on that I haven't mentioned yet is DJ Shark. DJ Shark is an extremely talented wide receiver. He was you know right around wide receiver 24 in ADP this past offseason and he may just be lucky enough to end up with Trevor Lawrence at quarterback in the next season. We saw what happened with the Jets on Sunday, they ended up winning a game they definitely should have lost. And now the Jaguars are poised to get the number one pick in the NFL draft for 2021. That means Trevor Lawrence. That means everyone on that offense just got a bump. And not a small bump, a massive bump. Because Trevor Lawrence is what we call a floor-raising quarterback. He's going to raise the floor of everyone around him, whether it's the tight end in that offense, the wide receivers. So you're looking at DJ Shark. You're looking at LaVisca Chenault, who's going to be great coming into his second year in that offense. We've already seen what Amari Rogers, the slot wide receiver, does at Clemson. Trevor Lawrence hits him on bombs all the time. Then you look at the running backs. James Robinson is going to have a floor that's a little bit higher because he's going to see passing volume as well. The tight end. It doesn't matter who's in that offense. They're going to be better because Trevor Lawrence is there. And so I would definitely be looking at buying DJ Shark, but I do know that the price is going to skyrocket. It will go through the roof. His, his dynasty value right now is what it is. It's around wide receiver 25 to 30. LaVisca Chenault, same story, around wide receiver 30 to 35. But both those guys are going to see a massive, massive, massive rise in ADP because Trevor Lawrence is probably going to be their quarterback. Then you look at Denzel Mims, everyone was projecting him to get Trevor Lawrence, but now he may be stuck with Justin Fields, it may be somebody else, we're not really sure. And so it's just a different level, like yes, Justin Fields is extremely talented, but he's not quite Trevor Lawrence, he's just not. And if you're talking about Trevor Lawrence going to the Jaguars, a team that already has good weapons, that's a team that I want to bet on, and I want to bet on their number one wide receiver, and that's DJ Shark, the second round product out of LSU. The other guys I want to kind of just quickly mention is Darnell Mooney, the wide receiver for the Chicago Bears. He may end up being a very, very good value this offseason because we've already seen he's the number two in that Chicago offense. We're not sure about the quarterback play right now, but he's already shown his ability to get it done in the open field. He can beat defenses deep, and I believe he's like wide receiver 56 right now. So he definitely has an opportunity to assert himself in that offense next season. And I believe Allen Robinson's contract is actually up. So for all, for all we know, he could be the wide receiver one there next season if Allen Robinson decides to move on. Again, another veteran who may switch teams. And so I don't really love that situation that much. As much as I love A-Rob as a talent, I don't love him if he's going to switch teams and we don't know where he's going to go. And so there's a bit of uncertainty there as far as that goes. And so... But Darnell Mooney, he's going to be there. He was drafted to play there. Um, we've seen what he does in the offense. He's been pretty good. Um, even this, this past week, I believe he had 14, 15 points and a touchdown. So it's encouraging to see from a guy that I didn't, I didn't really expect a whole lot of. And uh, this historic wide receiver class has been so, so good. And I even mentioned Chase Claypool, who's kind of fallen out of favor a little bit. He's, you know, right around wide receiver 22, and he's going to be pretty good next season. I think it'll depend kind of on what they do with Juju. But in my opinion, Deontay Johnson is still the number one. Um, you don't need to ask me any questions about Deontay. Deontay's a wide receiver one. And Deontay Johnson's going to be the next guy to kind of take the league by storm. You know, he's had the drops issues, but I think he's going to be able to clean it up. Um, he's so talented. He's just, he's a marvel, honestly. And, and the number one in that Pittsburgh offense is a very good wide receiver to have. And so definitely, you know, right around wide receiver 22, make sure you buy up Deontay Johnson this offseason because he could be the next Chris Godwin, Calvin Ridley, name the next guy up. Deontay Johnson's probably going to be that, and he's probably not going to be drafted too high simply because the production wasn't quite there. The drops, whatever, all these different circumstances, Chase Claypool in a similar ADP, but we've already seen Deontay Johnson as the one. It could be Claypool, but I'm still projecting it to be Deontay. I think he does a little bit more. Chase is great, um, but we're going to kind of see how he grows into that offense this offseason and how he can improve overall. 
With that being said, I want to say thank you guys for tuning into this episode of the Dynasty Stock Watch. I hope you guys enjoyed it. There's a lot of wide receivers out there, a lot of things to parse through. I kind of just wanted to touch on as many as I could, give you guys as much info as possible as who I'd be buying, who I'd be kind of fading a little bit. But overall, there's a lot of talent and not even to mention all the wide receivers coming in. They're going to still fall in that same bucket, you know, like wide receiver 16 to 30 is going to be loaded with even more rookies as well. And that's going to push some value, some value down the board. And so those are the kind of guys you want to be picking up are some of those value plays. They may be a little bit older, but if you have a really good top heavy roster, you can pick on some of these value guys further down the board that are going to get pushed down by rookies rather than gambling on those landing spots and stuff, which I don't always love to do. Even though the wide receiver class is great, I'm not always trying to gamble on that in my Dynasty startup drafts. That being said, again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. I'll probably do like a wrap-up and a final thoughts with some, uh, some buy-low guys, some guys I'm targeting in the offseason that are going to be a little bit lower um, on the Dynasty value charts. So, again, thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.